Sunday, we celebrate the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. It can be also called as the intervention of God in the life of St. Paul. This intervention of God, this turning point of St. Paul, happened on his way to Damascus when he was about to persecute the Christians. And let us remember, during the public ministry of Jesus, in his inauguration, at the start of his public ministry, Jesus proclaimed. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. And if we go to the Old Testament, we can compare the zeal of St. Paul to the law to Phineas. The story of Phineas is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 25. Not only to Phineas, even to Elijah, the prophet. The zeal of Elijah is like also the zeal of St. Paul, depending God's law in a solemn contest with the prophets of past, of his dedication, of his honor, love, and reverence to God, Yahweh. And because of that, we can say that St. Paul is a zealous man. His zeal for the law, his zeal for the fulfillment of the Torah was so extraordinary. And if you are going to see the life of St. Paul, this is just a summary. Paul was born in Tarsus. Then he moved to Jerusalem and studied under Gamaliel, the great rabbi. He became a Pharisee in Jerusalem. And then he became the persecutor of the way. The way was the name whom the first followers of Jesus were called. The transformation of Saul or Paul is for many people one of the most intriguing stories in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Paul or Saint Paul, a violent persecutor of the church who is transformed into a mighty apostle. From being a persecutor into an apostle of Christ. The change in the direction of this man's life is due to the supernatural intervention of God. Saul is introduced as a man implacably opposed to the cause of Christ and his people. He is described as breathing out murderous threats against the Christians, as it is narrated in the Acts of the Apostles. Before his conversion, Paul was very religious. He was a Pharisee. In his letter to the Philippians, he said he was circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blamed it. In his letter to the Galatians, St. Paul testified, for you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it, and how I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. He was a devout and sincere observer of the law. In the Acts chapter 23, verse 1, he said, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And in the same book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 16, he said, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. In the story of the conversion of St. Paul, we can say and we can find the appearance of Jesus. There's the bright light. You know, his story of conversion is narrated in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, chapter 22, and chapter 26. There's the appearance of the bright light. 
There's also the voice coming down from heaven who said, Why do you persecute me? And the voice who says, I am Jesus. And the voice told him to go into the city and appear to you sent to Gentiles. And St. Paul also got blind. After his conversion, St. Paul became a sincere, devoted, loyal disciple. In the Acts of the Apostles, he said, But declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem, and throughout all the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. In his first letter to the Corinthians, he also testified, For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. St. Paul testified that his conversion was truly a grace from the Lord. In the summary of the life of St. Paul, we could find here that before his conversion, he was an adversary to the church, enemy to the Christians, destroyer to the church, persecutor to the Christians. And after the intervention of God, after his encounter of the Lord, he had his turning points and became the advocate of the church, defender of the faith in Christ, the builder of Christians, and he also experienced persecution. It's time to ponder on the life of St. Paul in his conversion. We can find here, we can tell, that change is real, conversion is real, transformation in one's life is always possible. It is always possible if we allow God to work wonders in our life. It is always possible if we allow God to enter and penetrate in our lives. And we have to ask ourselves, do I allow God to enter into my life? And the last question is, how can I say that God has found a space in my life?